Given um, the disturbing incident in the United States a couple of days ago, I'm just wondering if you can tell us how you're feeling about the security of politicians in this country. Do you feel that more needs to be done or are you guys talking as a caucus, as a government, about what more needs to be done to protect politicians? Uh, there's no question this is on all of our minds. Uh, what we witnessed in the United States was terrifying uh, and uh, really a disgusting act of, uh, of violence uh, that is vile and reprehensible in every way. Uh, it is essential in democracies that we settle our differences, uh, you know, at, at ballot boxes and, uh, and in chambers of parliament uh, or cha legislators uh, or in, legis uh, excuse me, in legislative uh, chambers. Uh, I, look, I had a, I have all kinds of experiences where people come up to me. Somebody, I was on a run uh, on a rural road on a weekend uh, and got cut off uh, by, a, by a pickup truck. Somebody getting out very angry. Uh, that stuff can be scary. Turned out it was a great conversation. Um, I think all of us uh, need to take a step back. Um, there is, um, I, I've spoken a lot about this when I was house leader. Uh, we can't stop the, uh, the important conversations about what our policy differences are, and those are going to be aggressive. But the personal characterizations, uh, the personal motives that we impugn one another with, uh, I think that we all have to be careful about that. Um, but, you know, it, it can be very difficult because the, the positions that are held are extremely different. And in a democracy, people have to be able to free to, to speak their mind uh, and, and, and particularly do so vociferously. Um, but... Uh, social media and the anonymity and the toxicity of these comments, um, yeah, I think about it a lot and how we can do a better job, uh, you know, being more direct with people and trying to avoid, uh, you know, uh, personal slurs or things that might be incendiary. Uh, but I think as a society, hopefully that's a bit of a wake-up call. Uh, the United States is different than us, but not that different. And uh, the fact that, uh, that violence is percolating so close to the bottom that we see something uh, happen like what we saw in Washington uh, is something that I think all of us need to think about. How are we treating one another? How are we talking to one another? It's not just political actors. It's everybody. And I think, it, you know, it's very disappointing as a human being to go on social media and see the way people are talking to each other and what is deemed to be acceptable in how people are talking to each other. And the fact that that's bleeding out into real life is not surprising. But hopefully it's a bit of a moment for us all to look in the mirror and think about you know, how we're interacting with one another on a day-to-day -day basis as, as human beings. Just to follow up on that, you know, you talk about personal responsibility in, in the kind of conversations that happen online. That kind of stuff bleeds out into our legislatures, too. It bleeds out into Parliament in, in question period in particular and the way that our leadership interacts with one another. So what responsibility do you guys bear as leaders of this country to change the rhetoric? Well, I'll talk very personally. I, I was in opposition, um, and I've reflected publicly uh, many times uh, that uh, I think I got it wrong uh, in a number of different instances in terms of the line you're talking about and the temperature, um, and that I try uh, in all of my engagements, uh, whether or not speaking in Parliament or uh, in, a, you know, in, a, in a media exchange like this, to really think deeply about how can I present my case in a way that's fact-based and kind of, you know, make sure that I'm not too incendiary and that my, that I don't, you know, get too passionate and kind of overstate things. Um, I'm a human being. Sometimes I get those things wrong. Um, but I think we as a society um, uh, absolutely deserve leaders uh, who are being very careful in the way that they're presenting information and that, they're, that they avoid being incendiary or over the top. Um, uh, and that are staying rested in facts, um, and that we have to hold one another to account for that. Uh, I think one of the challenges, in, and you see this, I won't pick on individuals, but there are certain folks, and you guys would know them, who uh, love an over-the-top statement, um, and then they put it on to uh, uh, you know, social media, and it's out of its context. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just give a case in point. Uh, I made a comment when the, we were I was talking very specifically about a conservative policy 
on, um, uh, you know, that you'd have to drive 44,000 kilometers to get the benefit um, that they were promising. And so I was joking around about that, about how many days you'd have to spend in the car in order to get their benefit, and that the uh, cost of it was uh, eliminating action on climate. And it was taken out of context and it was put online. And so I've gotten a couple of people come up to me very, very angry, right? Well, you, you're against my family taking a road trip. I said, well, who said that? Well, Andrew Shear said, you don't, you know, you didn't, uh, you, this is so irresponsible, you're against road trips. Well, come on, that's not what I said. And, and that is really problematic uh, when we totally mischaracterize one another's comments for political gain. Now, uh, I'm sure you, you, somebody will go over my time in opposition and say, Mark, well, you did that and this time or that time. And I, I like to think that I didn't do it, uh, I, I, I certainly never did it intentionally. Um, but in my uh, rhetorical flourish, um, did I create a circumstance that, you know, maybe I was saying something that I should have been more careful about, that we could keep it more grounded the facts? I think so. Uh, and I think that there should be a greater responsibility and a greater consequence uh, when any of us uh, so distantly wander from facts to create anger that is manufactured and not real.